So we're going to aim for a 10 mil fillet, approximately 50 mil from each of the edges. It might be advisable to keep on the right side of the plumber and put some additional dabs where the radiator is going to be fixed. Now I just need to get my straight edge and my level and get the wall nice and flat and plumb. I'm John from A&E Construction and today I'm going to be showing you how to dot and dab. I'll be talking you through surface preparation, how to mix the product and how to apply it to a wall and around reveals. So first of all let's take a look at the bag. One of these 25 kilogram bags will cover on average around two boards. If you look at the back of the bag it does show you lots of information including how much water to add to the mix and how to mix it up. If you're going to buy this product in bulk, please make sure that you use the older bags first. The use by date is clearly printed on the side of each bag, so like I say, make sure you use the older stuff first. The area in which you apply this product must be protected from the weather. Also, make sure that the surface you're going to go onto is dust free. If it's cast concrete, make sure that it's free of shutter release agents and dampened down before application. If the background is extremely smooth, you will need to apply thistle bond it before you use this product. Right, now I've made sure that my background is fully ready to receive the dot and dab. It's dust free, it doesn't require any thistle bond it, so all I need to do is get my area prepped. By that, what I mean is, I need to look for any high spots on the wall, that will then determine the furthest point out which my dab is gonna come. When I've done that, I've then put a chalk line across the bottom of the floor, and then that determines where the face of the boards will end up. If you'd like to, you can also run an additional line across the ceiling, but what I'm gonna do in this instance is get everything nice and flat, and then use my level to make sure that these walls are perfectly plumb. Now I know exactly what I'm doing, I'm gonna go and mix up some dab. Okay, now the fun bit, we're gonna get mix in. First of all, before anything, make sure that all your tools are nice and clean. Also, the water should be fresh, clean, cold water. It's worth noting that contamination, so i.e. plaster from another mix or dab from another mix, can cause adverse setting times and it's also worth noting that fresh contamination tends to be worse than old contamination. So once you finish the mix, clean your tools off straight away in preparation ready for the next one. With regards to water, make sure you have a check on the back of the bag to see exactly how much the manufacturers recommend that you apply with the powder. Make sure that when you're mixing this up, you mix in a well ventilated area and wear a mask wherever possible and also use a mechanical whisk it's completely fine to use rather than the old method of a stick and bodger. You can use one of these, but make sure that you mix it the absolute minimum that you need to. Get rid of all the lumps and then stop mixing because over mixing can cause adverse setting times. So now what I need to do is leave this for 10 minutes to stand before I commence my application on the wall. So time for a quick cup of tea I think. It's always worthwhile getting your dab out of a bucket and onto a spot board. If you leave material in the bucket it can generate excess heat which can cause the material to dry quicker. So get your spot board out, give it a good wet and get your dab onto the spot board. That way then you know it's not going to go off too quick and the working time will be pretty accurate. Right, when you're applying your dabs onto the wall, it's worth noting the preferred method, which is a 10 mil fillet, which will run around the perimeter. So up each side of the wall, across the ceiling line, and down here. Across the bottom of the wall, you need to apply a 25 mil fillet and a continuous band. Then we need three vertical bands at 25 mil each dab. I'll show you that process right now. So we're gonna aim for a 10 mil fillet, approximately 50 mil from each of the edges. So we're going to work our perimeter right the way across and down the sides as well. So I've done my vertical band down here, across the bottom of the wall or along the skirting line, these should be 25 mil fillets. Around your surfaces, so plug sockets, light switches, they should also be 25 mil solid fillets around these also. You 
You can also notice I have a windowsill here and my reveals. So rather than the 10 mil fillet, we're gonna do a 25 mil fillet around here and all the way around the reveals also. So now I've done all my perimeter beads, I've done my skirting line and I've done round on my services. Now I need to do three vertical lines across a 1200mm board. There needs to be between 50 and 70mm between each dab and the dabs need to be approximately 250mm long, which is why I'm using a small trowel because that is about the size you need. Let's get these on. So now I've got my three vertical lines on, I'm now coming up to the joint of the board. What I need to make sure of this is that I stay 25mm back from the next board with my dabs. That prevents any bridging between board to board. In some properties, in some rooms, underneath windows, there are radiators. So it might be advisable to keep on the right side of the plumber and put some additional dabs where the radiator is going to be fixed. Also, if there's any cupboards or anything like that going on the walls, it's a good idea to put additional dabs where there will be fixings. Okay, all my dabs are on, and using this method means that I get the minimum requirement of 20% coverage on the back of the boards when these are applied. So my boards are all cut, let's get them stuck on. So, the boards are all in place, now I just need to get my straight edge and my level and get the wall nice and flat and plumb. I've plumbed down here, this board is nice and plumb. I've plumbed down here, this board is nice and plumb. And I've got my straight edge right the way through, so I know they're all level with each other. So that wall is now exactly how I want it. And that's it, easy as that. That is how you dot and dab a wall. If you'd like any further technical information about this, please visit the British Gypsum website. I'm John from a Construction and I'll see you next time.